on Y News. The Philippine National Police says there may be no need for another extension of martial law in Mindanao, which will lapse by year end. Manila Mayor Isko Moreno warns activists after writing message of protest in the newly cleaned Lawton underpass. Six soldiers were killed in a clash with New People's Army rebels in eastern Samar. Malacanang dismisses as baseless remark made by Senate Minority Leader Franklin Drilon, who calls the government's multi-trillion peso build, build, build program a dismal failure. And the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority to test Sea Games traffic plan on November 14. Good evening. The National Police says it may recommend the possible lifting of martial law in Mindanao. This was in favor with the recent pronouncement of Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana, who said that he sees no need for another extension in Mindanao. Arlene Delgado reports. The Philippine National Police on Tuesday says it is open to lifting martial law in Mindanao, given its present conditions. According to PNP spokesperson, Police Brigadier General Bernard Banak, the peace and order situation in Mindanao is now under control, though high alert remains in some areas in Sulu due to suspected presence of the Abu Sayyaf group. He says the PNP is set to submit its recommendation before the National Security Council by December. Uh, peace and order in Mindanao is mm -hmm. under control and the uh, criminalidad doon ay napakababa na. Mm -hmm. Ang proliferation ng mga loose firearms ay nakontrol na natin at uh, inaasahan natin na mapapanatili natin ito sa mga darating, darating pang panahon. Defense Secretary Delphine Lorenzana earlier said he is not keen on recommending another martial law extension in Mindanao. Lorenzana says it would be a better arrangement if the Congress can pass the Human Security Act. National Security Advisor Hermogenes Esperon Jr. earlier said another extension of martial law would no longer be necessary if Congress is able to pass a measure that amends the HSA. President Duterte declared martial law in Mindanao on May 23, 2017 following a text launched by the Islamic State Link Mauta Group in Marawi City, Lanao del Sur. Harleen Delgado, UN TV News and Rescue, Quezon City. As the residents in Mindanao express different positions on martial law extension in the region. The Armed Forces of the Philippines and the local officials in the region meanwhile say they will depend on the national government's injunction. Dante Amento tells us why. The martial rule in Mindanao has been extended three times. It was first prompted by the Marawi siege over two years ago when the Maute ISIS terrorist group attacked Marawi City, Lanao del Sur in 2017. Now with only more than a month before the last extension expires, Mindanaoans have varying positions on the existing martial law in the region. Some are in favor of another extension. With strict security implementation, lawless armed groups cannot easily enter, making the people feel safe. In Zamboanga City, the no ID no entry policy has been enforced since President Rodrigo Duterte declared martial law in Mindanao. Zamboanguenos are pleased because there is no abuse of power or authority among soldiers with the present martial law. Wala namang karahasan. Walang military abuses, ganun. Oh, okay. Okay lang kahit extend ang martial law, okay lang. Bini sa sitwasyon. Okay. Okay kinanglan, kinanglan na sa presidente, angay mo nila yapon ay paggamit. Other suppose another extension. With the martial rule, violence may spread in the future, they say. Pag may martial law, ano, lalong gugulo tong ano, yung Mindanao natin, magulo na nga. Meanwhile, the armed forces of the Philippines and the local officials in Mindanao say they depend on directions from the national government. The EFP Western Mindanao Command has conducted consultations with stakeholders. They are finalizing their assessment report to be submitted to higher headquarters. Base yan doon sa ating assessment on the ground. At the same time, uh, with or without uh, extension ng Marcelo, uh, pagpapatuloy pa rin natin yung ating uh, pandat. Zamboanga City officials admit the security status in the area has improved a lot with martial law set in place. 
However, they will abide by the national government's injunction. They have the better wisdom, no? Ang uh, DND. If this is fit na kailangan wala ng martial law sa Mindanao, then okay lang rin naman sa amin. Wa, walang problema. Kasi sa Sambuanga City, uh, hindi rin namin uh, naramdaman kung meron bang masamang epekto ang martial law sa amin, no? Meanwhile, officials from neighboring provinces Basilan and Sulu believe that if martial law is terminated, heightened security in Mindanao must remain. Kumaganda talaga dahil marami silang nagagawa. Tumusunod kasi ang tao pag sundalo talaga ang, sa mga activities. Pag na masyado nang matagal, baka isipin ng tao, lalo na sa Sulu, sa Sulu. Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana yesterday said he does not recommend the martial law extension in Mindanao. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue, Zamboanga City. Six soldiers were killed and at least 20 others were injured in a clash between the government troops and members of the New People's Army or NPA in Morongan City, Eastern Samar yesterday. Initial police reports indicated that three platoons of the 14th Infantry Battalion encountered around 50 NPA members at Sitio Bangon in Barangay Pinanaan at around 5 p.m. The firefight lasted for about 30 minutes. The report also stated that six improvised explosive devices simultaneously went off before the encounter. The names of the soldiers killed and wounded in the battle have been withheld as their families are not yet informed of the incident. One rebel who is yet to be identified was said to have been killed while an un undetermined number was wounded in the gunfight, authorities said. <music> Vice President Lenny Robredo is giving law enforcers leeway to conceptualize a more effective program for the drug war. The Vice President says she will discuss during a meeting with law enforcement agencies on Thursday. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. Wanting to stop senseless killings in the government's campaign against illegal drugs, Vice President Lenny Rubredo pushes for changes in the drug war program. The country's second top leader welcomes Malacanang's decision of giving her free reign on the government's anti-drug campaign. But instead of dictating the ICANN agencies on what to do, the new co-chairperson said she's giving a leeway to law enforcement agencies to create programs as new approach to the drug war. Pero ako, I'd rather na... Yung, yung law enforcers, yung, yung pa-conceptualize ng, ng mas effective na, na programa para may ownership sa programa. Mahirap yung parang dikta lang tayo ng dikta. Meanwhile, Committee Chairman Representative Robert Barbers of the Committee on Dangerous Drugs has said earlier his committee will support the VP's move. Barber said that ICAD will need more data to craft more effective policies for the anti-illegal drug campaign. Kung kinakailangan taasan ng budget ng ICAD, eh, Tutulong ang aming komite uh, sa paglalabi sa Komite on Appropriations na pataasan ito. Barbers also said they will invite the Vice President after she reveals her new approach to the anti-drug campaign. A proposal welcomed by VP Robredo. So, gusto ko yun kasi magiging platform yun para mailahad natin yung saan patungo yung bagong direksyon nitong kampanyang ito. Tomorrow, the Vice President will meet with a U.S. official to discuss ways to contribute to the Philippine government's drug war, especially in intelligence gathering. VP Robledo says she welcomes everyone's help in the campaign against illegal drugs. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. Malacanang agrees with Foreign Affairs Secretary Teddy Loxin Jr., when he said that rights defender and the former deputy director of Asia Division of the Human Rights Watch, Felim Kin, will be denied entry if he tries to enter the Philippines. According to presidential spokesperson and chief presidential legal counsel Salvador Panelo, Kin and other rights defenders like him are not welcome to come to the country because they already have conclusions on the Duterte administration's anti-drug war. Keen says in a Twitter post he is ready to come to the Philippines to help advise Vice President Lenny Robredo on how to end what he calls a murderous drug war. He adds his first recommendation is to arrest President Duterte and his alleged henchmen. Anybody who gives a conclusion 
that there has been killings, murders, without justification. Eh, may problema sila. It has been about six months since more than half a million people took to the streets of Hong Kong to protest the government's proposed extradition law. But Filipino workers in the territory are steadfast to work hard to reach their dreams and to provide help to their families. Ferdi Patalio reports. Sunday is the only day of the week when Filipino workers in Hong Kong go outdoors to enjoy time off work. Beatrice Ramos is an OFW who has been working in Hong Kong for 24 years now as a house help. To reach central Hong Kong and be with her friends on their favorite spot, she has to travel for more than 30 minutes. According to Beatrice, she is affected by the ongoing protest here. Maaga kami uuwi, hindi kami makapag-enjoy. Kasi pag ano, gabi ka nang uuwi, wala nang masakyan. Minsan nga naranasan kong umuwi. Mula chimchacho hanggang siyamsiyo po may git dalawang oras, nilakad ko. To avoid getting involved in the unrest, Filipino workers refrain from putting up makeshift shelters or go near rally areas. The Philippine Consulate, for its part, has been announcing advisories through social media. Most OFWs here say they are not being targeted. They are certain their safety is also the concern of the police and protesters. Hindi naman kami nadadamay sa gulo nila eh. Magtrabaho habang gusto ng amo, tuloy-tuloy pa rin po. Kasi nasasayo na yung ba't ka magiging safe eh. Huwag kang pupunta rin sa may nagrarali, safe ka. Ngayon kung matigas ang ulo mo, makikiusyoso ka doon, eh hindi ka safe. Pirgas ka. The conflict between the government and the people of Hong Kong may go on. Its end is uncertain. But despite the chaotic environment, the Filipino workers remain determined to bend over backwards to provide for their loved ones back in the home sweet home, the Philippines. Ferdi Petalio, UNTV News and Rescue, Hong Kong. Thousands of overseas Filipino workers gathered at the 9th OFW and Family Summit in the World Trade Center in Pasay City today. They were urged to become entrepreneurs in the Philippines. Asher Kadapan Jr. reports. More than 4,000 overseas Filipino workers gathered today to add more knowledge in finance, entrepreneurship, and empowerment. The 9th OFW and Family Summit aims to encourage OFWs to establish their own businesses in the Philippines. Our intention is in the, in, in the future, nababalik sila sa Pilipinas, dapat yung mga pamilya nila meron ng hanap buhay na naghihintay sa kanila para pwede na silang mag-retire at mag-operate na lang dito sa Pilipinas. The Villar Social Institute for Poverty Alleviation and Governance or Villar CPUG Foundation led the project in cooperation with the Department of Trade and Industry or DTI and other government agencies. Financial literacy forum and consultations on how to become successful entrepreneurs were also held. Hindi nila kailangan magtayo ng restaurant kung ang galing mo caregiving. Or uh, ikaw ay the graphic artist, pwede kang graphic designer, at yun yung iyong negosyo. The DTI reminds the public that small and medium business enterprises running for more than a year may avail a financial loan from the agency. Just visit any of their negotiation centers nationwide. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, Pasay City. Welcome back to Wine News. We pick up to where Angelo Castro the third left off. I'm Alex Belbazar, and here are the headlines. The Philippines beats China as the world's biggest rice importer. Malacanang dismisses as baseless remark made by Senate Minority Leader Franklin Rilon, who calls the Duterte administration's multi-trillion peso build, build, build program a dismal failure. Metropolitan Manila Development Authority to test Sea Games traffic plan on November 14. Heavy rains and strong winds rip tents in Makilala, Cotabato evacuation sites. And Kuya Daniel Razon receives Technology Award from the Rotary Club of Commonwealth. 
Good evening. Manila Mayor Francisco Isco Moreno de Magoso issued a warning to those behind the vandalism of walls of the Lagusnilad underpass, which the local government had earlier cleaned up. Bernard Dadis details why. Manila Mayor Isco Moreno de Magoso is furious over the vandalism made by the activist group Panday Sining at the newly painted and cleaned Doton Underpass, Lagus Nilad Underpass. Nagahanap kayo ng matinong pamalan. Nagahanap kayo ng matinong tao sa pamalan. I'm not saying I'm one of those. But we're really trying to clean up and revive and making Manila vibrant. We don't deserve this. The people of Manila don't deserve this. The city mayor also threatened the activist group should they do it again in Manila. Dumagoso added that it takes 15 years before the long-neglected underpass was now renovated and people now have trust using it. People are afraid of passing through that underpass because there's so much obstruction. Solven boy here, solven boy there. Mayor Isko immediately ordered to clean the vandalized area this afternoon. Meanwhile, Panday Sining released a statement saying, Sorry for the inconvenience, referring to vandalism in Lagusnilad Underpass, which they called Grapiesta. But they justified that it was allegedly due to the space for peaceful and democratic speech is already being compromised by the regime as it pushes to criminalize dissent with its de facto martial law nationwide. According to them, this is only their response as a cultural youth organization to worsening economic and political state of the nation. They said they are willing to talk to Mayor Isco and ending their statement calling all artists to join them in their so-called grapiesta. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Local farmer groups continue to call for the scrapping of the rice tariffication law. This after a U.S. study saw the Philippines as the biggest rice importer in the world this year. Harleen Delgado reports why. The Philippines is expected to import 3 million metric tons of rice before the year ends, according to the United States Department of Agriculture Foreign Agricultural Service. This is 58% higher than the imported volume last year. The country even surpassed China, which is expected to import 2.5 million metric tons this year. The Federation of Free Farmers says the government should revisit the law and apply higher tariffs to slow down the importation. For the group, the government must prioritize the entry of local rice into markets. For the Kilusan na mga magbubukid sa Pilipinas or KMP, the law must be repealed. On the latest data of the Philippine Statistics Authority, the farm gate price of palay is 15 pesos per kilogram. But the KMP claims there are some areas in the country where palay can be bought for only 8 to 10 pesos per kilo. Hindi na rin po namimili ang National Food Authority kasi po sa ilalim po ng rice tariffication and liberalization law, ito po yung Republic Act 11203, hindi na po sila mamimili ng palay sa magsasaka. Kaya po lalo kung binabarat ng mga malalaking traders at cartel. Meanwhile, Group Bantay Bigas also reiterated its call to scrap the law that will cause bankruptcy among Filipino farmers. But data from the Department of Agriculture reveals the country has almost reached the anticipated imported rice volume of 3 million metric tons. DA spokesperson Noel Reyes says, according to the data of Bureau of Customs, a total of 2.99 million metric tons of imported rice has entered the country from January to October this year. 1.8 million metric tons of these came after the rice tariffication law was passed in March. We cannot restrict because if you restrict, mo yan, we're, we're going against the law. Unless the law says that we can only import so much. The DA admits it is looking at a possible oversupply of imported rice in the country. That's the feeling of uh, the department since because of the complaints of farmers and farmers groups. That's the wish of the Secretary and Senator Villar. After a year, they have to re review the RTL and probably put in some more provisions so as not to over-exceed our rice requirements. 
The DA is also expecting the influx of rice imports to be reduced as an effect of better local rice production. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. Malacanang refutes Senator Franklin Drillon's statement that the Duterte administration's infrastructure program is a dismal failure. The palace says Senator Drillon's statement has no basis. Rosalie Cos details why. Presidential spokesperson and Chief Presidential Legal Counsel Salvador Panelo enumerates and details the status of the infrastructure projects under the Duterte administration. This is to refute the statements of Senate Minority Leader Franklin Drillon that only 9 out of 75 flagship projects have started. Senator Drillon also argues the administration's Build, Build, Build program is a dismal failure. After three years, over three years, only nine have commenced. But according to Malacanang, the present government's infrastructure program is far from that of the former administrations, which the senator is an ally of. Senator Frank, look at the administration you previously belonged. Six years, not a single infrastructure nagawa. Malayong malayo. The palace official is also confident most of the build, build, build projects will be completed within President Rodrigo Duterte's term. Malacanang believes the Department of Public Works and Highways leadership is effective in connection with the questioned projects. Secretary Panelo adds the statements of Senator Drilon has no basis. Secretary Panelo adds the statements of Senator Drilon has no basis. It's baseless. Maraming ang ginagawa ang administrasyon. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue, Malacanang. Senator Ralph Recto criticizes Malacanang over the promised bill that will raise the salary of civilian government employees like public teachers. According to the senator, 2019 is about to end but no development has been seen in the salary standardization law 5. The senator explains there are pre-parked funds in the proposed 2020 budget amounting to 31.1 billion pesos that will be used for the salary increase. If computed, the more than 1 million civilian employees will receive an increase of only 1,718 pesos monthly. Senator Recto appeals to the palace to submit the bill soon as the Congress will soon start deliberating the proposed salary hike. Farmers in Mountain Province donate Shiot to Mindanaoans affected by the recent earthquakes in their region. Meanwhile, strawberry lovers may need to spend more than just to enjoy the bright red fruit as the holiday season nears. Monoxon details why. Sacks and sacks of chayote from Baoko and Sagada towns in Mountain Province have been sent to Mindanao for the earthquake-stricken residents there. This is part of Oplan Sayote, first organized by the local government of Sagada. The initiative came upon the suggestion of the local farmers as well as the regional office of the Department of Agriculture. Due to an oversupply of chayote, its price has gone down to 3 to 18 pesos kilogram. Kasi nasira sa bagyo. Pero nung ganitong medyo maganda na ang panahon, kumami yung bunga ng sayote. Kaya dumami yung supply. Siyempre, sabay-sabay yun. Meron pa yung hindi na mitas. Even lettuce is abundant nowadays. What used to be 30 to 40 pesos per kilogram, the green leafy vegetable can now be bought at 15 pesos per kilo. On the other hand, there is a low supply of strawberry in the city of Pines due to the recent typhoons. The fruit can be sold at 600 pesos per kilo. Vendors explain only strawberry farmers from Mountain Trail and Santo Tomas in Baguio can supply marketplaces in the city for now. Wala pang Trinidad ngayon. Magtatanim mo na sila. Yung itong uh, March, ayun, bumira yung uh, Trinidad. Binagyo ang uh, ano, uh, malalayos ang gar uh, garden nila. But June Virola, a local tourist, says he is willing to pay as much as 300 pesos for half a kilo of strawberries. So no, pero I think it's worth it kasi malalaki ang gusto to ng family ko. So I think it's worth it na. 
Aside from the coming holiday season, Benguet is also preparing for the Strawberry Festival in March. The local government assures there will be enough supply of the bright red fruit in time for the celebration. Mon Hokson, UNTV News and Rescue. Survivors of a series of earthquakes in Makilala, Cotabato had been displaced anew after their tent shelters were blown away or soaked by strong winds amid heavy rain and a hailstorm yesterday. Meanwhile, classes in all levels, both private and public schools in the town, will remain suspended this week. Hazel Fares as details why. Strong winds and heavy rains destroyed several makeshift tents at two evacuation centers where some of the evacuees in Makilala, North Cotabato, are staying following the recent earthquakes that hit Mindanao. Evacuees endured thunderstorms on Monday afternoon while staying in their temporary shelters in Makilala Central Elementary School. A cell phone video taken by one of the evacuees showed makeshift tents being destroyed and pulled apart by strong winds and heavy rains coupled with ice pellets. At the Santa's Land Evacuation Center in Poblacion, Makilala, several tents erected using tarpaulin and bamboo wood were also ripped apart by heavy rains that lasted for almost an hour. Lumipad po halos lahat po. Kadalasan mga damit nga nila basa. Sa sobrang lakas niya, parang nagbaliktad talaga yung ano niya. Cheryl Orbita, acting municipal administrator of Makilala, assured no one was injured while an individual was brought to a hospital after falling unconscious. Orbita added that evacuees affected by the heavy rains have been given assistance. More than 50 families from the Santa's Land Evacuation Center were also transferred to a temporary shelter in Makilala National High School while around 100 other families opted to remain in the area. Dinala naman din sila ng pagkain doon. Ah, may, may. Oo, naaluto na. Tsaka yung mga damit na, kasi nabasa yung iba, may mga damit doon sa, sa nililipatan nila. The National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, or NDRRMC, said that as of November 12, there are 20 evacuation centers catering to more than 4,700 families in Makilala. Overall, there are 69 evacuation centers serving a total of 53,612 quick-hit families in Davao and Sox Surgeon regions. Meanwhile, classes in all levels, both private and public schools, in Makilala, North Cotabato will remain suspended this week. Mayor Armando Kibod has ordered the extension of class suspension as the town continues to experience aftershocks and many school grounds are still being used as evacuation centers. Hazel Frizes, UNTV News and Rescue. Awareness on disaster preparedness is fast spreading across the country. What with the various catastrophes that hit the country? To spread such awareness and more, UNTV News and Rescue has visited the high school community in Calamba City, Laguna. Sherwin Colobong tells us why. The Philippine Volcanology and Seismology or PBOX identifies Barangay Kandubang in Calamba City, Laguna as among the places situated on the West Valley Fault. To gear up for possible movement of the fault, the local government continues to conduct earthquake drills for residents, businesses and other establishments. With the aim to keep their students and the rest of the school community safe and prepared, Kapayapaan Integrated National High School has requested UNTV News and Rescue for a basic life support seminar. Maging handa at maging alerto sa anumang mga magiging kapahamakan na dulot ng mga bagyo, lindol o anumang mga sakuna na nararanasan natin dito sa ating bansa. Magkaroon kami ng kaalaman about preparedness, edo eh, mas lalawag pa uh, yung... Uh, information na natutunan dito, malaking bagay talaga yung nangyari ngayon. The school houses about 3,000 students and more than 100 teachers. They say that proper basic life support abilities matter a lot. Bilang estudyante, sobrang laking bagay po kasi bilang kabataan, dapat po namin matutunan para po makatulong kami sa mga susunod na henerasyon. Mahalaga ang buhay ng tao, no? Kung kaya't mas mahalaga din na paghandaan natin ang lahat ng bagay na darating sa atin, sa kuna. UNTV News and Rescue also imparted disaster preparedness techniques during the training. Ito po yung uh, advocacy uh, ng UNTV at ni Kuya Daniel Razo na uh, maturuan ang lahat ng tao sa pagbibigay ng first aid, ma-orient sila 
sa mga disaster na kung ano na maaaring mangyari and maturuan din sila kung, kung paano sila makakapag-survive sa mga disaster na naka, nakaamba. Just last month, the Regional Mobile Force Battalion of PNP Calabar Zone underwent UNTB News and Rescue's basic life support training. Sherwin Kulubong, UNTB News and Rescue, Laguna. BMPI UNTV President and CEO Kuya Daniel Razon receives a Technology Award from the Rotary Club of Commonwealth. Technology experts say even businesses must undergo transformation and more innovations must be pushed through, just like what Kuya Daniel has pioneered so far. Let's find out why from Asher Kadapan Jr. Mr. Public Service Kuya Daniel Razon has been recognized for his remarkable innovations in the field of mass broadcasting. He pioneers the use of drone journalism and interactive weather reporting in the Philippines via UNTV News and Rescue. Ang ating pong sunrise, 5.44 a.m. Atin ang pong sunset, 6.08 p.m. Yan ang ating ulat panahon, umulan man po't umara, huwag natin kalilimutang pasalamatan ang Diyos na lang. A number of prominent award-giving bodies have awarded him for his technological innovation through the creation and concept of the Wish 1075 bus. And yet again, Kuya Daniel received the Technology Award from the Rotary Club of Commonwealth in a gathering of innovators in Quezon City yesterday. A round of applause for Kuya Daniel Razon. Yung mga advocacies niya or yung mga projects niya, um, inahaluan niya ng digital transformation. Which is na um, maraming nakakakita through digital transformation yung mga good deeds other technological innovators also presented their own creations during yesterday's occasion. Like Temi, a personal robot that functions as an assistant that immediately provides information, makes calls, plays music, and more through voice command. Experts say modern technology eases work processes and boosts business revenues. This is why they also recommend businesses in the country to undergo digital transformation. Transactions nila dapat online na. Ngayon kung ikaw, company, na mali kang company, hindi ka pa nag-online, wala ka pang online presence, no? uh, masyado ka pang manual ang method mo, mapapag-iwanan ka. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. And to finally complete the most significant news for this day, why news continues, here are the top stories. Tropical depression Ramon affects some parts of the country. As of 4 p.m. today, Pag-asa located the cyclone at 670 kilometers east of Borongan, eastern Samar. Packing with maximum sustained winds of 55 kilometers per hour and gustiness of 70 kilometers per hour moving westward slowly. Tropical cyclone wind signal number one is raised over eastern Samar and the eastern portion of northern Samar. Expect 30 to 60 kilometers per hour of wind in the area within 36 hours. Ramon will bring scattered rain showers and thunderstorms over Visayas, Bicol region and the provinces of Quezon, Mindoro, Marinduque, Romblon, Surigao del Norte and Dinagat. The cyclone is expected to bring heavy rains, especially in northern and central Luzon, in the next days. It is likely to cross the country's landmass. Meanwhile, Mayor Isco Moreno reiterates he had given a chance to vendors in Ilaya Binondo, but they wasted it. While vendors in Ilagantondo, our area, are confident they won't get evicted. Bernard Dadis tells us why. I gave you chance. Sila naman ang nagpabaya. Hindi naman ako nagkulang. Kapag nabigyan sila ng pagkakataon, huwag na nila sayangin ang pagkakataon. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is Manila Mayor Isko Moreno de Magosa's answer to the appeal of evicted sidewalk vendors in Ilaya Binondo area. 
Ilaya Street seemed like a ghost town last night after Mayor Isko prohibited sidewalk vendors due to their negligence of maintaining cleanliness in the street. Even in the morning, no sidewalk vendors were allowed. Police personnel, Manila Department of Public Services staff, and even barangay officials and Tanod monitored the whole stretch of Ilaya Binondo round the clock. Mm, mas malinis ngayon. <coughs> Hindi katulad ng dati. Nagpulog po kami ng aking mga kagawad na pati ang mga tanod na kinakailangan pitong araw sa isang linggo, 24 oras, hindi mawawalan ng umiikot na tanod. But unlike the vendors in Ilaya Binondo, vendors in Divisoria like in Ilaya Tondo freely displayed and sold their products. They did not fear that they would suffer the same fate because they maintained the cleanliness and even placed trash bins at their stalls. Hindi po kami matutulot po sa kabila kasi dito po, mga susunod po yung mga tao rito, tsaka hindi po kami mga pasaway. Itong ginagawa niya, talagang nakakatulong din naman sa amin dahil maluwag. Makapasok po lahat ng mga customer namin, hindi kagaya dati na sobrang sikip. Hindi naman kasi total na sinisiro ni Mayor to. Mabait naman si Mayor eh, kung susunod ka lang sa kanya sa patakaran niya. Gusto niya malinis lahat. Meanwhile, Sensio Lagamayo, the barangay chairman of Barangay 269, apologized to Mayor Dumagoso. Na ipinapangako ko pong hindi na po mauulit at ito isang leksyon na po sa amin, sa akin, sa aming mga barangay official, hindi lang mamuk po sa akin, pati po sa lahat ng mga uh, aking nasasakupan na nakikinabang po sa kalsada. Bernard Dadis, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. Some vendors evicted from sidewalks amid the government's clearing operations use their own ways to continue their livelihood. In Quezon City, the government designates a temporary vending site for evicted sidewalk vendors. Aiko Miguel has more details. Maintaining the streets clean and the public roads free from obstructions, such as illegally parked vehicles as well as illegal vendors, remain a challenge for the Quezon City Department of Public Order and Safety or DEPOS. But evicted vendors have their own ways to continue their livelihood. Marcelino Malubay and his family can go on selling with the use of a cart. They sell viand on the sidewalk. They are using kulong-kulong or mobile food cart. According to Marcelino, this way they can move faster and much easier when authorities come for a clearing operation. Vendors here, like Marcelino, say their income has been less since the nationwide clearing operations began. Although they understand what the government wants to accomplish, they are requesting clearing operatives not to chase after them. Oh, yun lang po ang hiling namin sana. Pag-uras naman po sana na tumatakbo na yung sasakyan namin at yung mga mapaninda. Huwag naman pong habulin na kasi naka, yun naman po ang usapan talaga sa mataas eh. Pag nakaligpit yung mga vendors, nakalinis, huwag nang habulin. Depos advises vendors to avoid staying on sidewalks so that their products won't be confiscated. This as depots continue to inspect cleared roads. Meanwhile, the Quezon City government has designated a vending site. This is where vendors who used to sell on sidewalks can set up their stalls without fearing to be ordered to move out or close. There is an area that is provided as their vending site. What does it vending site? Temporary bending site para itong mga natanggal na vendor ay doon muna doon, doon magtitinda na hindi sa gabal sa mga sidewalk, highway, pathwalk. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue, Quezon City. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority will conduct traffic simulation for the delegates of the 2019 Southeast Asian Games. Among the roads affected are the North Luzon and South Luzon Expressways and EDSA. Joe Anano tells us why. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA advises motorists to expect heavier than usual traffic on November 14 in EDSA and other parts of Metro Manila. This as a simulation will be held for the convoy of athletes and delegates of the Southeast Asian Games hosted by the Philippines this year. On Thursday, the northbound lane of Edsa, Mindanao Avenue, North Avenue, Quirino Avenue, Pasay City, Taft Avenue, Magallanes, and the North Luzon and South Luzon Expressways will be affected by the convoy simulation. The MMD advises they will implement the stop-and-go scheme on those roads. 
pag malapit na ititigil mo na. So magtataka ko yung mga kababayan natin, bakit kami tinitigil? So ibig sabihin po doon, may paparating pong convoy. Pero paglagpas po ng convoy, rest assured, back to normal na po yung traffic. The convoy will use the yellow lane. No special lane will be designated. MMDA traffic enforcers will man the affected roads. On November 26, four days before the SEA Games commence, the MMDA and other concerned government agencies will rehearse for the opening ceremony of the Southeast Asian Sports event. The MMDA advises to brace for much heavier traffic two weeks from now. Authorities will also simulate the pick-up and drop-off of the SEA Games spectators. Yung mga Truckers Association, pinakiusapan po natin na agahan ang kanilang business, no? lalo na po yung dumadaan sa NLEX. Um, pakiusap po natin sa kanila, 11 in the morning hanggang 6 in, 6 in the evening, wag na po muna silang dumaan sa NLEX. Kasi po inaasahan natin as early as 1, may mga atleta ho na ho at mga magre-rehearse. Aside from the simulation of the convoy going to Bulacan, the MMDA will also simulate the delegates' return to their respective hotels in Tagaytay, Pasay, Manila, Subic, and Clark, Pampanga. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue. And for the news abroad, here's Kath Dumaraos reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand. Kath, good evening. Good evening, William. Evo Morales has accepted an offer of political asylum in Mexico a day after resigning as president of Bolivia amid election fraud protests. In a tweet, he said it hurt to be leaving Bolivia, but he would return with more strength and energy. Mexico's Foreign Minister Marcelo Ebrard confirmed Morales had boarded a Mexican government plane. Meanwhile, Bolivia's military commander ordered troops to back up police who have clashed with Morales supporters. Some 20 people were reported injured in the clashes. Morales earlier urged his supporters to resist the dark powers that had forced him to step down. U.S. President Donald Trump on Monday paid tribute to all U.S. veterans in an emotional message at the traditional Veterans Day Parade in New York. Trump, the first sitting president to participate in the event, said that it is time to acknowledge the sacrifice of all soldiers. Justin Masakayan has the details. President Trump returned to his hometown on Monday to kick off the 100th annual New York City Veterans Day Parade, his second visit to the city since he announced he was making Florida his primary home. In an 18-minute speech, Mr. Trump expressed his gratitude to American veterans, but also used his remarks to pay tribute to the city. He promised U.S. veterans that the nation would never forget those who guard the country's freedoms. During the event, a minute of silence was observed to mark the 100th anniversary of World War I and a floral offering was placed in Madison Square Park where Trump spoke. This is the first visit Trump has made to New York where he was born and lived for decades before winning the presidency, since he changed his official residence from that state to Florida where he will enjoy significant tax advantages. According to Trump, he made that decision because the political leaders of New York City and New York State have treated him very badly. During Trump's remarks, signs were visible in the windows of nearby skyscrapers saying, lock him up, and similar messages referring to the impeachment investigation now underway in the House of Representatives. Several dozen people also gathered close to Madison Square Park displaying banners and signs reading, traitor, criminal, lock him up, sexist in chief, and impeach Trump, and chanting these and other slogans. Justin Masakayan, UNTV News and Rescue, USA. And those are the news from the other parts of the globe. Back to you, William. Thank you very much. Kath Dumaraos reporting live from Bangkok, Thailand. Data from the Philippine Statistics Authority show that there are 34 million singles in the country. The autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao and Quezon City in Metro Manila have the most number of single Filipinos based on the PSA data. My Bermudez has more details. She 
She's not choosy, but Aliyah preferred to end her nine-month relationship with her former partner to focus on her work. Aside from her boyfriend being a constant source of headache, the man she thought she would end up with is now with another woman. Anong message mo dun sa ipinalit sa yon ng boyfriend? Sana hindi ka rin ipagpalit. <laughs> Harleen has no boyfriend since birth or NBSB. She has a different take on why she prefers to be alone. Ngayon kasi mga panahon to, parang nakikita naman natin mahirap yung buhay. Mm. Kailangan talaga. Kasi ako, family first kasi ako. Mm. Mas inuuna ko yun kasi yung pag-date ng saan-saan. Data from the Philippine Statistics Authority or PSA shows there are about 34 million single people in the country. Single Filipino men are 18 million, while Filipina singles are almost 16 million. The region with the most number of singles is the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao or ARMM. In Metro Manila, 1.1 million singles are found in Quezon City. An expert says choice and poor quality of life are some of the main reasons why most Filipinos chose to stay unmarried. Or yung iba, so gusto pa rin mag-explore, so nagtatravel, so hindi sila mga pag-settle. So, hindi natin alam kung ano yung bracket na sinasabi nila na single. Eh. So, dapat malaman din dyan kasi... Uh, may reportasyon yun eh. My Bermudez, UNTV News and Rescue, Manila. And those are the reasons behind the news this September 12, 2019. On behalf of Alex Baltazar and Angelo Castro III, I am William Theo. And before we close, we will recap with today's significant sound bites. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. Good evening. Huwag kayong panghuli sa akin. Pag nahuli ko kayo, padidila ko sa inyo ito. Ang uh, peace and order sa buong Indonao ay under control. At ang uh, kriminalidad doon ay nakakababa na. Mm. Ang proliferation ng mga loose firearms ay nakontrol na natin. At uh, tinaasahan natin na mapapanatili natin ito sa mga darating pang panahon. Pero ako, I'd rather na... Yung, yung law enforcers, yung, yung pa-conceptualize ng ng mas effective na na programa para may ownership sa programa mahirap yung parang dikta lang tayo ng dikta That's the wish of the secretary and senator Villar after a year they have to review, review the RTL and probably put in some more provisions so as not to over exceed our rice requirements <laughs>